In the opening scene of the movie Gladiator, Russell Crowe is the gladiator. He's Maximus Decimus Meridius. How many of you, all locations, you've seen the movie? Yeah, you know Maximus Decimus Meridius, general to the armies of the north, husband to a murdered wife, father to a murdered son. And I will have my vengeance in this life or the next. He's Roman, but he's got a little Australian kind of thing going. In the opening scene of the movie, he's on his horse, he's there, he is the general of the army, and and his horse, you know, is is, is going up and down in front of the army, and he's giving his army this inspirational uh, speech, and he he says this. He says, brothers, what we do in life echoes in eternity. Does that sound familiar? I'm going to say it again. What we do in life echoes in eternity. That's true. The decisions that you and I make in this life ripple out into the afterlife. So the question is, are we investing our lives in that which will last forever? What we do in life echoes in eternity. I uh, was here last weekend. I actually came in from uh, California. My family and I were vacationing there. We're we're back now, so I flew in last weekend to to preach. But we've been away for a a couple of weeks at the beach and and getting tan and uh, eating a lot and all those good things. And I gotta tell you, I had this dream. Not like a literal dream, but like something I really wished for, hoped for, wanted. I had this dream that, that when I came home, like it would be the great reset. You know what I mean? Like everything would kind of get back to normal. Like, like we wouldn't have any more big worries or in, in, in any of that. And it just seems over the past couple of weeks that it's a little more chaotic and a little more confusing. Can anybody relate to what I'm saying? And I just wanted new. Like I'm tired of the old, Right? I'm tired of the past year and a half and, and, and all of that, all locations right now, because it's baptism weekend, it's like participatory, you cheered just a moment ago. If you can relate to what I'm saying, if you just want new, if you're tired of the old over the past year and a half, can I just see a show of hands, would you help a brother out? Yeah, I, I, I just want, want new. And, and I was like griping to God about it. If you're like, is it okay to gripe to God? Read the Psalms, yeah, it's okay. God already knows, okay? So just tell him how you feel. It's not like he's surprised. He's aware. So you just go ahead and talk to him about it. But I'm griping to to, to God, and I'm like, God, I want the reset. I I, I, I want the new. And this passage of scripture that I'm going to share with you today came came to mind. And as I read through it, and and as I prayed about it, I thought, I'm I'm going to share this with with the church this, this weekend. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 beginning in verse 17, and we're going to read down through verse 21, talking about what we do in life echoes in eternity, and and with that, this desire that all of us have, especially in this moment in history, that all of us have for, for new. The Bible says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ... What does that mean? If anyone has put their faith in Jesus, if anyone has trusted Jesus, if anyone has given their life to Jesus, if anyone has said yes to Jesus to be their savior and the leader of their life, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has has come. The old has gone, the new is here. Would you guys read out loud those last four words with me? The new is here. The new is here. The new is here. The new is here. And as I was praying and talking to God about it and kind of whining about our current reality and I'm a leader and I got to carry this and what am I going to do if this happens and this happens and this happens and I got all that going on and I'm whining about the old and God just kind of whispered to my soul and said, Chad, the new is here. The new is here. Because if anyone is in Christ, they are a new creation. The old has gone, and what? The new is is here. Now, I need a little bit of new. How about you? I I need a lot of new. How about about you? 
I mean, I, I even began to, to think about, okay, I'm coming back from, from, from vacation and, and we're going into the, the fall season and in Arizona, the fall is August. Welcome to the fall weather, right? And in Arizona, August is the fall because kids are going back to school and either your kids have gone back to school or they're about to go back to school if you're in that season in, in, in life. And we all think about the new. And so I came home and I thought about some new changes, you know, and I'm making some resolutions and all of that. And in, in my prayer, I, I just felt like God told me, you know what? I, I don't want you to make a resolution. Like you, there needs to be some powerful repentance in your life. And what I want to do with you is it's not that, you know, you try harder, do better. I want to do something supernatural in you, Chad. I, I want you to experience supernatural transformation. I need a little new. How about, how about you? Did you know that the new is always offered to you in Christ? Because in Christ, it's out of this world. In Christ, it's above our circumstances. In Christ, there is always something new. Because in Christ, there's new depths of love to experience with him and from him. There's, there's new experiences overall in life, new areas of faith, new areas of trust, new areas of, of obedience, new areas of, of understanding. If anyone is in Christ, the old is gone and the new has, has come. And, and I felt like the Lord just told me, Chad, you're whining about the old. Watch me now. Why don't you just choose to step into the new? Could it, be, could it be that in your heart and in, in, in your mind, you're waiting for something to happen in the world, and it could be we're waiting for a long time. It could be it's chaotic for a long time, but I'm telling you in Jesus' name, there's new for you. There's new for you, and you and I can be in this world and yet not of it. We can experience a peace that the world doesn't experience. We can experience a newness that the world doesn't experience because in Christ, you are becoming, through your faith in him, a new creation. That supernatural transformation is taking place if you and I will just step in to it. You know, when it comes to all this stuff going on in the world, let me just tell you, there's only one direction in life. You know what it is? Forward. Forward. Life is still happening. And God wants to do something new in you. The Bible says that his mercy is new every morning. Every morning that you wake up, you are waking up to a brand new batch of new. And God's mercy is new every morning, and it is good every morning. Think about this. As the earth rotates in that 24-hour cycle, that means the mercy of God blankets the earth each and every day. Everywhere there's morning, his mercy is is new. There's, there's new for you. There's new for you. Now I won't make you raise your hand on this one, but could it be that you're whining about the old, whining about what is instead of stepping into the new of what God will do and stepping into the new of what will be if you and I will just trust him? He says, if anyone is in Jesus... They're becoming a new creation. The old is gone. The new is come. And in fact, we've become a new creation. We're just learning what that means. There's new for you. Verse 18. He says, all this is from God. The apostle Paul is writing this. He says, all this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. Paul is the only one that uses this word to... Be in the ministry of reconciliation is to help people connect with God. To be reconciled means you were apart, now you're reconciled, you're, you're back together. To be involved in the ministry of reconciliation means you're an ambassador of the new. So God wants to do something new in you, and he wants to sh you to share the new with others. That's, that's what we're reading. All this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us, gave us the ministry of reconciliation. Verse 19. That God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ. How does he do that? Look at this. This is beautiful. Especially if you're here to celebrate the baptism of a family member or a friend and you're unfamiliar with, with scripture. What we're about to read is something called the gospel. God's reconciling the world to himself in Christ. How does he do that? Not counting people's sins against them. Not counting your sins against you. And he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. So here's what we've got. There's new offered to you, and the new offered to you is a new that you're to share. So it's for you, but it's not all about you. There can be new in you, but it's not all about you. You, you want to share it with, with, with others. 
If you're new to this thing, God doesn't want to count your sins against you. This is what the cross of Jesus is all about. He died on the cross for all of your sin for all time, and then three days later, he rose again. The cross is all about God not wanting to count your sins against you. He took all the penalty that you deserve because of your sin, that I deserve because of my sin, and he put it on Jesus. Jesus paid the debt for all of your sin for all time. This is the gospel. The word gospel means good news. The angel said it this way when Jesus showed up at Christmas time. It's good news of great joy for all people. We have a savior. He's Christ the Lord. Everybody look at me, especially if this is new for you. There's new offered to you, but it could be this information is new for you too, okay? Are you tracking with me? Here's the thing. Christianity is not about what you do or don't do. Christianity is about what Jesus has done for you and whether or not you will choose to trust him. This, this reconciliation that, that, that God wants you to experience with, with him was accomplished through what Christ did on the cross. He died for all of your sin for all time, paid for all of it, and then three days later, he rose again. He, he's alive and, and well. And he wants you to trust him as your savior, so you're not counting on your own goodness. You're not counting uh, that you'll have more good than bad in your life. The Bible doesn't teach those kinds of things. The Bible teaches that we're a sinner and we do not want God counting our sins against us. So God sent a savior. His name is Jesus. And it's not about what we do. It's about what he's done for us. He died on the cross, paid for all sin for all time. Three days later, rose again. He's alive and well. And the Bible teaches that if you will trust him as your savior to save you from all of your sin and as the leader of your life, your sins will never be counted against you. Jesus takes them all on himself. We're gonna read that here in just a moment. So there's new for you. There's new for you. And if anyone is in Jesus, they're a new creation. The old is gone and the new is here and God has given us the opportunity to join him in this ministry of reconciliation and to share this new with everyone. Verse 20, we are therefore, we are therefore Christ's ambassadors as though God, look at this, as though God were making his appeal through us. And then he gives the preacher moment. We implore you, that's strong language. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to, to God. How, how do I do that? By trusting in Jesus. Asking Jesus to be the savior and leader of your life. God made him, verse 21, one verse, power packed, theologically rich. Here's what Jesus did for you on the cross. God made Jesus, God made him who had no sin to be sin for us so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. What does that mean? If you say yes to Jesus as your savior and as the leader of your life, here's what the Bible teaches. Jesus takes upon himself all of your sin and imparts to you all of his righteousness. It's a great exchange. Everything you have done wrong, are doing wrong, will do wrong, Jesus takes that upon himself, pays for it with his life and what he did on the cross, and then he imparts to you his righteousness, his, his goodness. Which means this, maybe you've heard this before, you know, you go and you stand at the gates of heaven and somebody there at the gate says, why should I let you in? Anybody ever heard that before? And some people think, you know, it's going to be St. Peter and then you tell a joke or something. But somebody's there at the gates of heaven, why should I let you in? What will your answer to that question be? Here's my answer. I'm going to look over at Jesus and I'm going to go, uh, because I'm with him. He with me, I'm with him. God made Jesus, who had no sin, to be sin for us so that in him we might become the righteousness. Another word in modern term to say it, that we might become the rightness of God. How are you made right with God? By trusting in Jesus, by receiving Jesus, by giving your life to Jesus. Shockingly, Christianity is all about Christ. It's all about us trusting Jesus and living for Jesus, and worshiping Jesus, and loving Jesus. And, and it could be, it could be that you're like, hey, I've made that decision. It could be that you've never made that decision. And today I'm gonna give you an opportunity to do that here in just a moment. But it could be you've given your life to Jesus, but again, you're whining about the old, and he's calling you to step into the new. I'm gonna give you three decisions, three decisions that I wanna ask you to make over the next six weeks to help you step into the new. 
Because what we focus on is what we move towards. If you focus on the chaos in the world, you will be confused and your soul will feel the ramifications of chaos. And all of us have felt that in recent days, right? But if you focus on who God is, if you focus on the new that he wants to do in your life, if you focus on that which is good, you will experience his goodness in your life. How many of you have heard garbage in, garbage out? Your mama ever tell you that? Garbage in, garbage out. Well, I'll tell you something else that is true. If garbage in, garbage out is true, so is goodness in, goodness out. Does that make sense? So you want to just fill your mind and your life up with the new of, of Jesus. I'm going to ask you to make three decisions. They're very simple, but commit to them so that you might step into the new that Jesus has for you. No, number one, the new in you, number one. Over the next six weeks, as we start this series about hearing God, will you come to church? Just come to church. Somebody asked me uh, not too long ago, hey, Chad, if I never come to church, will I still go to heaven? I'm gonna answer that question. I said, well, I don't know. Have you given your life to Jesus? Yes. Are you really trusted in Jesus? And, and, and he's your savior and the leader of your life? Yes. I go, well, one, if that's true, you'll, you'll be coming to church. I go, but two, yeah, then, you, then you'll go to heaven because it's not about what you do or don't do. It's about you trusting in what Jesus has, has done for you. I said, but, but, but here's the thing. I could choose not to go home today. Now, I'd still be married. I've already made that decision. But if I don't go home today and I don't go home tomorrow and I don't go home the next day, that's gonna affect that relationship. If that makes sense, can I get a yes? Okay, when you choose not to come to church, when you choose to be all alone, you are choosing to be an orphan in the family of God. And this is not God's will for you. Part of the new that Jesus has for you is in the context of worshiping Jesus with, with other believers. And so for all of you this weekend, you are choosing in this moment to step into the new that Jesus has for you. So, so good job. We're gonna celebrate in a moment, you know, these baptisms. That's a picture of new. This is the old person. They've trusted in Jesus. They've been washed in his love and mercy and grace. Now there's a brand new person and this person walks in the newness of life that Jesus has for them. But, but church is how we experience the family of God and it's God's will for you. He doesn't want you to be an orphan. For the next six weeks, I'm just asking you to make a six-week commitment. Come to church. Let's learn together how to hear from God. Whether you realize it or not, it's your greatest need in life. To hear from God. You were created to have relationship with God, to know God, to walk with God. We're going to learn how to hear from him over the next six weeks. Come to church. Number two, second thing I'm going to ask you to do over the next six weeks is get in a group. What, what, what does that mean? You're going to get in a group with some other people who are wanting to, to follow Jesus, step into the newness that Jesus has for them, and we're going to, and we're going to help each other. It's, it's conversation. If you're like, am I going to have to pray out loud? No, not unless you want to. Okay, am I gonna have to quote a bunch of scripture? No, you don't gotta do any of that. All you gotta do is show up and just, just be part of it. The reason that we do groups at Sun Valley, we're a really large church and God wants you to be part of the family of God, which means he wants you to have some friends. And, and groups help make that happen. It's authentic friendships centered around God's word. There's three types of, of, of groups. You can get in a group online, groups.sv.cc. You, you can go and, and be in groups in, in people's homes and you can check that out. Uh, or in this next run, in this next six weeks, we're gonna do on-campus groups at whatever campus that, that you attend. And your campus pastors will be talking to you about that. But, but get in a group. It's part of God's will for you and it's part of stepping into the new that God has for you in this, in this season. I'm going to invite you to this, this Wednesday night. On the first Wednesday of every month, we do a thing called Midweek. It's the first Wednesday of every month, and we have an online prayer gathering. So this Wednesday, if you want to go online at 7 o'clock, live.sv.cc, if you have prayer requests, some way we can pray for you, you can share those over chat. Pastors and leaders will be there to pray with you and, and, and for you. And we have a time of worship, and we have kind of corporate prayer, literally thousands of people across the communities where we are, all praying Together, It's a beautiful thing. I think over the past uh, year and a half, some of the most powerful moments our church has had has been in the midweek service prayer times. So join us online this Wednesday at 7. Again, step into the, the new. So come to church. Get in a group. Third thing I'm going to ask you to do is make an invitation. Make an invitation. Did you notice in the passage of scripture we just read, it said that you're an ambassador for Jesus. Did anybody notice that? Did you notice that God literally says that he's making his appeal to the world through you? Did you notice that? 
Okay, that means all the new, everybody look at me, if you're, especially if you're a Jesus follower, all the new that God has for the world is gonna come through you, church. No pressure. You're the hope of the world and there is no plan B. So we're to make an invitation. And I wanna encourage you to, to invite somebody to, to church. Next weekend uh, is, is a launch weekend. Uh, we're launching two new campuses. Uh, they've been meeting for a, a while, but our East Mesa campus is opening to the public. We're excited about that. We're marketing to the public, so that, that'll be next weekend. East Mesa, super excited for, for you. And our South Gilbert campus is officially opening. It's been open again for a while, but officially opening uh, to, to the community. What a great time to invite somebody. So next weekend is kickoff weekend at those two locations and at, and at all of our locations. If if you want more information on that, you can go to kickoff.sv.cc. So next weekend, as we start this series about hearing God, it's kind of the big kickoff for the fall. Again, it's August and it's the fall in, in Arizona. Everybody look at me. Invite somebody. Understand the moment. You never know what God might do through that simple invitation. In, invite somebody. As we experience baptism in the service here in just a moment, just know everybody that's being baptized, it's because somebody invested in them. It wasn't somebody perfect. It wasn't somebody that was Jesus Jr. It wasn't somebody that knew all the answers, you know. It was just somebody who said, come and see. And God took that invitation and worked in and through their lives. Seize the moment. Who are you going to invite? I'm going to give you a step to take. Everybody take your phone out right now, all locations. Would you do that? All of you who are at church at home right now, if you're in the car, you don't have to do it because I don't want you to hit anybody if you're just listening in the car, okay? But all of you who are at home, everybody at all of our locations, pull out your, your cell phone. I'm going to give you three instructions. It's going to come here to the screen, all right? Go to share.sv.cc, okay? This is an experiment. It's going to work for most of you. Some of you might have a little bit of trouble, all right? But you can figure it out later. Go to share.sv.cc. That's going to take you to our Facebook banner that has the kickoff ad on it, like that post, and then share it on your Facebook page. And here's why. Because you have contacts with lots of people that we don't have contacts with. And, and then follow up with it and make, it, make an invitation. If you're like, hey, I'm not 40, I don't have a Facebook page. Then here's what you do. Just go in there and screenshot that and put it on your Instagram or your TikTok or however you roll. You with me? I know Facebook is for old people. I'm one of them, all right? But you can, you can do that and put it on your Instagram. You're like, I don't have Facebook. I'm then, then go to my Instagram, all right? I'm gonna put it on there late, later today uh, at Pastor Chad Moore, all right? You can take it off mine, screenshot it, and then put it on yours. But let's share this with as many people as we possibly can. You never know what God might do through a simple invitation. God has new for you. I need some new. How about you? Yeah. That's, that's in Jesus. And it's not just new for you. It's, it's new that you and I can share. And in that, change the world. One life at a time. What we do in life echoes in eternity. What we do in life ripples into the afterlife. This past Friday, I got to attend a funeral service here in our church for Jeff Forney, and we celebrated his, his life. For those of you who don't know Jeff, um, he has shared with us a lot of our uh, morning devotionals. If you do the daily Devo, if you're unaware of what I'm talking about, we do little videos Monday through Friday where we share a passage of scripture and, and give some thoughts, and, and Jeff was one of the leaders in, in that. I, I've known Jeff for, for many years. Jeff's a young man, a healthy man. And just a couple of weeks ago, my wife and I were out in California and Jeff texted my wife Katrina and says, hey, I'm not gonna get the Devo done. I'm not feeling well. And, you know, and she's like, it's okay. You know, Chad's here, he'll do it, right? And they had that little exchange. And we, we sent uh, Jeff and his family a little DoorDash gift card and he wrote back and said, said thanks. And then like a day later, I got a message from Jeff's wife. 
she said he he passed away in the night. I got to tell you, as a, as a pastor, sometimes you got to lie a little bit at somebody's funeral. You know what I'm saying? Like, like you're supposed to only say good things at somebody's funeral, and then sometimes you have to embellish a little bit to, to, to make that happen. You've all been to a funeral like that, right? That's not the case with Jeff and his wife. This guy loved Jesus. This guy loved his wife. This guy loved his family. This guy knew that what we do in life echoes in eternity. He lived his life in such a way that he knew whatever investments he made in this life, it was going to ripple out into the afterlife. And as we celebrated him this past Friday, we also celebrated the grace of Jesus. And the reality that Jeff trusted in Jesus, that he'd given his life to Jesus, that there's victory in Jesus, if we'll just trust him. And God does not count our sins against us. Jesus takes them on himself and gives to us his rightness, his life. And there was great hope knowing that Jeff had made that decision and Jeff shared that with as many people as he possibly could. Now, Jeff wasn't a saint and he wasn't perfect, but he was on mission. After we find out Jeff had passed on and graduated to heaven, Katrina said, did you watch his last devotional, like the one that's online? And I said, no, I, I missed it. She said, go back and, and watch it. And Jeff's last devotional, his last public message to you and me on the morning devotionals is called Victory in Jesus. You can watch it. It's June 24th. Jeff is in heaven now, a new arrival. And I took just a little clip of that last devotional that he shared with the church. And I wanted you to see it. This is my friend, Jeff Forney. Verse 58. Therefore, my dear brother, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourself fully to the work of the Lord because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. Keep on praying. Keep on preaching, keep on giving, keep on serving. It's not in vain. The world may not recognize it. Sometimes the church doesn't recognize it, but God does. Jesus Christ is that hope. The world can offer us hope and at times can deliver. If someone is in need of water, well, they can put hope in someone to give them water. But, you know, it's easy to give hope in the face of life. Jesus Christ gives us hope in the face of death. So where, O oh, death, is your sting? Where, O oh, death, is your victory? When we receive Christ, it's no more, death is not hovering over us saying, well, what's going to happen when I die? Or where am I going when I die? Well, we know where we're going. We're going to be in the presence of the Lord. And that's what Paul says. That's why we have this victory. And for us to stand firm, to be immovable, to keep giving, keep serving, keep abounding in the good work of the Lord and knowing that it's not in vain. Jesus is coming back again and he will take his church. He will take the, the perished bodies and make them imperishable. He will take the mortal bodies and make them immortal. And, you know, we can get into the, to, to the ins and outs of it, but we just know that it's going to happen. And Paul says we should have victory and stand firm in that and always give the Lord praise. Amen. Can we should take a moment to celebrate that. Absolutely. Now, here's the thing. I'm going to say this as straight as I possibly can. When Jeff filmed that, he had no idea what the next couple of weeks would bring. But he was ready. Not because he was good, but because he trusted in the goodness of, of Jesus. Because what we do in this life ripples out into the afterlife. The scriptures we read a moment ago, it said, I implored you, be reconciled to God. And so I, I'm going to just look at you right now and say, I implore, I implore you. I beg you. That's what that means. I challenge you with everything I've got. Be reconciled to God and into the person of Jesus.
Not trusting in your goodness, but, but his. Because what we do in life echoes in eternity. I'm going to ask you to pray with me. Would you pray with me? If you would like to be reconciled to God, if you've never received Jesus into your life, I can help you do that right now. Let's just talk to him together. You're going to pray quietly in your mind and in your heart, and I'll just help you talk to him. You would be choosing two things in this moment, to trust him as your savior, not in your goodness, but his, and to trust him as the leader of your life from this day forward. If you wanna make that decision, I'll help you pray and talk to him right now and say, Jesus, I need you. Confess to him, I'm I'm a sinner. I have sinned and and I will sin. And I don't wanna trust in my goodness, but in yours. Be my savior. And Jesus, will you be the leader of my life from this day forward? I want to learn the new that we find in you. I trust you, Jesus. Just tell him, thank you. Thank you for receiving me. I receive you. Amen. If that was you, whether you're at one of our locations or you're watching at home or listening in the car, here's what I want to invite you to do. Would you let us know that you made that decision? Send us a text. Here's the number you're going to text to. It's 48000. You can take your phone out right now. 48000 and just text the word yes. That's all you got to put and we'll respond. We have some things we would like to give you. It's totally free and help you get started on the journey. There's new for you, for all of us. I'm going to ask you again the next six weeks, come to church, get in a group, and invite somebody. I'm going to pray for us, and then we're going to celebrate baptism. Let's pray. Father, we thank you that there's new in you. Give us wisdom of these things. Jesus, thank you that you change everything. May we trust in you. Thank you for these who just said yes to you. I pray that we wouldn't wimp out from doing the text. That helps us. And so I pray we would do that and get started on the journey. Now, as we celebrate new life in you through baptism, I pray that all of us, all of us, all of us would be reminded again of your amazing grace. Bless this time as we celebrate new life in you. In Jesus' name, amen.